Hi guys, so in today's video I'm going to be doing my birthday nails and vacation nails. I got invited to a brand trip with McCart, so obviously I have to do some cool nails for it and their trip just so happened to be planned on my birthday. They didn't plan for that to happen, but it just sort of did. So in this video, I'm going to do some more stained glass nails and we're gonna do a bunch of different designs. Since I did the stained glass nails a couple of videos ago, I've been dying to do more designs and I wanna do a full set of them. And I think it's gonna look really, really cool and make some, you know, changes, improvements. I figured also we could just do some chit chat and I can catch up with you guys. It's been a while since I've just sort of like talked about life or whatever, you know, so I figured we could also do that. I did intend on having a face cam for this video since it is a chit chat video, but um, my second camera broke. So that's not possible. <laughs> so hopefully it's still a right to watch. Let's just get into it. I'm starting with these tips. They are the Maximum Square from Eno Couture. I'm gonna start off by just chopping off the number on these nails. I don't want that to show through. Well, that was not even. Let's try again, a little better. And I like to cut the thumber, thumber, what is that? I like to cut the thumb a bit shorter than the rest of the nails. That just makes, you know, living life a little bit easier. Not too short though. We still want them to look cohesive. I'm actually also going to cut the pinky just a teeny tiny bit shorter than others. For me, my pinky nail is like fragile because it's small. So I just also, you know, minimize the chances of hurting it. Let's just make sure we have everything all good in terms of length. I definitely don't want these to look the exact same as my last set. So I'm actually going to use black for my base color, like where, you know, your natural nail would normally show through on a French tip. I think it's gonna look really cool. And I am going to do a higher arch for sure. And I'm just going to fill that in. I'm doing these as press-ons, that way they are absolutely perfect for the trip. And also that way I can film other stuff in between then while guaranteeing that my nails will look perfect because it's a, you know, nail brand trip after all. This will be my first ever brand trip. A couple of years ago, I almost went on one and this whole story is actually the reason I <laughs> chose to get a manager to me, it still sounds crazy that I have like a manager that helps me, you know, with brand partnerships and stuff like that, but she's honestly the best. But this was the whole reason that I started looking for one. I won't say what brand cause it doesn't even matter anymore, but I got invited on a trip. I think it was, you know, a really quick trip, maybe like two days at a hotel or something like that. I don't quite remember where it was. And most of the time when you get invited on these trips, they're completely free, but sometimes there are like post requirements, which is fine if everyone agrees to that. But this brand invited me and wanted me to just do like stories or whatever. And I was like, okay, yeah, that's fine. I can totally do that and agreed upon it. You know, I was like excited and getting ready. Ooh, I wonder if I should do the tips pointed like this. I think I'm going to, that actually looks really nice. So the company sends me the contract and it said I needed to do like, I don't know, two or three times as much as I had agreed upon. And it was a lot. They wanted like pictures and stuff. And at that point I was not even doing pictures on Instagram. I was only doing, you know, like little makeup tutorials. So it wouldn't have even like fit in at all. It was a lot. So I thought that might have been a mistake. You know, maybe that was what they initially wanted, but then, you know, we negotiated and it should have been, I don't even remember what I agreed to, the stories or something like that. So I write the company back and they don't say it was a mistake or anything like that. Instead, they tried to sort of like renegotiate higher, like between what we had agreed to originally and then what the contract says. It very much seemed like they were trying to bamboozle me. And for me, I really, really hate dealing with companies. I like to do this. I like to film, I like to edit, and I do like to work with brands, but I hate the communication. I hate the negotiations. I'm not good at negotiating. I'm just not a business typey person. I never thought I would describe myself as like an artistic person, but I guess so, I don't know. So for that side of it, I really didn't love that. And had I not like really looked over the contract and I, you know, just assumed that they had put in what we had originally agreed to, I would would have been screwed with no lie. They wanted like seven posts or something like that over the course of like two days when I didn't even post pictures. I hadn't posted a picture in like years. 
They also wanted like dedicated sponsored videos essentially. It's what they wanted before we went, except they didn't want to like actually sponsor anything. They just, you know, were basically counting the trip as payment. And most of the time for these trips, while it is like promo, it's almost unheard of to use a trip as a form of payment. I've never heard anyone do that. And that's honestly not acceptable in my book. And there were a couple, you know, brands and stuff around that time to where I was just at my end with wanting to do the negotiations and stuff like that. So then I was like, maybe I need a manager and I got a manager and it's been great. I rarely, you know, directly deal with brands. And then I feel like I end up having a better relationship with brands because I don't have to do all the back and forth. So that was the story that no one asked about, about why I got a manager and the brand trip that I almost went on. When stuff is a while ago, I don't even think about the details like that until I start talking about it. And I remember I ended up talking to someone who was going on the trip also and they didn't have to do any posts at all. And we had a similar following and everything like that. I don't know why that company was trying to do me like that, but never again. I really do admire everyone who can do all of their own negotiations and stuff like that. Be the creative part and you know, like the businessy part, but that's just, not me. I think this trip is gonna be super fun though. I'm bringing David and I think this is going to be the third time we've ever gone out of town together. We usually don't because of the dogs. We don't like leaving them. I won't board them and I also don't wanna take them out of the house, you know, to someone else's. I just don't feel like that would work. So it's hard to find people to watch them that I trust. A couple years back when we went out of town to actually go get my fourth dog, we were gonna be gone for, I think it was four days maybe, including the drive because we drove all the way to Colorado from Tennessee. So that one wasn't even really like a vacation. <laughs> That trip was actually extremely stressful, but we didn't know anyone pretty much here in Nashville at the time. So we decided to use Rover and try to get a dog sitter. You know, we were hoping that we could find someone that was a good fit. So maybe we could, you know, go out of town together occasionally. So I found someone and I, let me just tell you, I don't normally say stuff like this, but I did not cheap out. I did not want to cheap out on a dog sitter because I wanted the person I was paying to do the absolute best job because I know I can be a little crazy with, you know, making sure my dogs were taken care of and happy. So I did not cheap out. And I found someone with good reviews and who could, you know, do the however many days and agreed to not really like leaving the house very much because I don't leave the dogs alone very much. Usually David, or I are home. And so they're just not used to being left alone for long periods of time. So we didn't really want that, you know, and that's a lot to ask of someone like, hey, can you stay at my house for like four days straight? So I did not cheap out and spoiler alert, it went absolutely horrible. Now that I have the base on, I'm going to put a layer of base coat to ensure that the tip itself stays clear. Sometimes with full cover tips, if you wipe them with alcohol, or acetone or anything like that, they can get some weird like white streaky lines. And I want to avoid that since I am going to be cleaning up nail art and that won't happen on a base, but that will happen on the actual nail themselves. So I wanna create that barrier. So the person that I hired, they seemed good. Everything seemed fine. I met them beforehand and discussed everything and I got their social media to make sure to, you know, everything looked fine. I tried to do my due diligence and I really tried to make it, you know, as easy as possible. And I'm just someone that if I'm gonna do something I'm gonna do it like full on and just do the absolute most. So it was gonna be her birthday. So I got her a birthday cake and left it in the fridge for while she was gonna be staying there. She asked if it would be okay if her boyfriend stayed with her since it was gonna be, you know, a couple days. And I said, yeah, that was fine. But I had to meet him, met him. It was all right, totally fine. Literally just told them, you know, my biggest concern is just the dogs, happy, healthy, comfortable. My house at the time had one camera, it was just, you know, the ring doorbell, nothing crazy. <laughs> I have more now outside around like my whole house, but at that time I just had one and it's a ring. It's not like I was trying to do surveillance or whatever. And everything was fine for the first day. Story to be continued. I'm going to cure this and we will start on some of the designs. I'm going to make my palette now. I'm going to need a ton of this, so don't be alarmed when I'm grabbing a bunch out, but I'm of course going to be using these Korean jelly polishes that I just used that I unfortunately love because they're so expensive. I know we were all hoping they would not be worth the price, but unfortunately they are. And then also I'm going to be getting McCart's jelly polish that I tried the other day and I like these. I like all of the ones except the orange. The orange is just not very vibrant. So I'm gonna put all of these out as well because they are like all different tones, which is really nice. So I have a big, big variety.
What a pretty palette. For the black lines, I'm going to be using this solid gel polish from Vetsy. This is a night dream and it's worked pretty well. I did like a test nail to just make sure this is what I wanted to do and it worked pretty well, super easy. Nice that it's in a pot. So let's get started. The thumbs are shorter. So I'm gonna do these ones as not a super intricate design. I've drawn a lot of hearts in my time and I still cannot freehand them. Now this one is going to be a broken heart actually because I feel like that works really well, the you know stained glass theme. Just could be a little cleaner. And I wanna do some sparkles. Back to the story. The first thing that happened was she had a friend over without asking me and I definitely didn't want people in my house. I guess we had not discussed that, but I just think that's a given. I wouldn't invite a friend over to a house I was watching, especially when she had asked me if her boyfriend could also stay. You know, why wouldn't she have asked me if her friend could come over? So she didn't ask me, but I didn't see that until her friend was leaving and I looked on my camera and they were talking about my G just saying what a nice Jeep and stuff, you know, thanks. But it was weird because then she told her friend to, to be careful though around it and stuff like that because I have cameras. And I just thought that was strange because I mean like I'm never gonna be mad at someone for saying that they like my car. I don't know. I don't know why she was telling her to be careful or like what they would be doing that they would need to be careful about. That was pretty weird but I just let that go. It wasn't worth it to start an argument or anything like that. And she was sending me some updates, but not really as many as I would like. So I was having to like ask how they were doing, which I don't really want. You know, I want someone to be proactive about telling me my dogs are doing good and stuff. And then they went to leave one time. And at this point we were driving back, but from Denver to Nashville, it's like an 18 hour drive. If you like barely stop, and we had planned to stop at a hotel along the way. That's a long drive and stay the night somewhere and then, you know, drive the next day. So we were planning to take like two more days to drive home. And I was watching just back my camera footage on the drive when we started back. And I saw that when they were leaving, her boyfriend was like cussing at the dogs, telling them to be good, but not in like a ha ha way, but more of aggressive way than I liked. So that just scared me. And we ultimately decided to just not stop and drive straight back, which sucked a lot, but I was worried about my dog and so that was worth it. Some of you know, we've moved across the country quite a few times. <laughs> So I'm used to driving the long distance. So I just decided I'm not stopping and I drove all the way home. I had told her that, hey, we're actually just gonna come home. We'll be home early. We were gonna get there about five in the morning. And I told her that the night before, I told her when we were like three hours out, I told her when we were half an hour out and it was five in the morning. But I also had told her that because we did come home like two days early, I'm still gonna pay you because that's not your fault. You know, you had expected to get paid a certain amount for this job. Job and just because I came home early, that's not your fault. You're not gonna get paid as much. So I was like, you can keep the pay, but we'll be home soon. So when he got home, I expected to get home and basically have her be ready to leave. You know, it was five in the morning. I just drove 18 hours. I, I wanna go to bed, but that was not the case when we got home. So we're getting in, we have a new dog. So we're trying to get all of the dogs acquainted to each other. There is pee and poop everywhere. I don't know how long they had locked themselves in the room, but it didn't seem like they had been paying attention to the dogs at all. My dogs never go inside the house. It is super rare that they would do something like that. Even if they are sick, they are pretty adamant about needing to go out and we let them out. You know, like an accident probably only happens I almost want to say once a year, it rarely happens. So when I got back, it looked like multiple dogs have gone in the house. I knew that they were not looked after like I had hoped, but we were trying to get all of the dogs acquainted to each other. It was 5 a.m. I was tired and they still weren't leaving. And I'm not about to go to sleep with random people in my house. So we're waiting for them to go to sleep. And finally, David is over it. And he knocks on the door and is like, hey, it's time for you guys to go. We're home. We want to go to bed. Thanks. They just say, okay, okay. At this point, almost an hour has passed. Like, what are you doing? Then he's knocking on the door again, telling them, hey, you need to leave, you need to leave. And they're just saying, okay, okay. They lock the door, can't open the door. So they basically at this point just lock themselves in my guest bedroom, not telling me why they won't leave, not really saying anything to us, but just not giggling in there. It was really, really strange and uh, unsettling. We're just sitting in the living room waiting for them to leave. And they both run out of the bedroom and go directly into the bathroom, which is literally like 
two feet away. It's the opposite wall to the door of the guest bedroom. And we were like, okay, maybe this is them just like getting their stuff and leaving. Nope, they proceeded to spend probably another 45 minutes in there like giggling and making some noises. I won't accuse them of doing anything in there, but um, I think you can guess what I think they were doing in there, which is not cool. <laughs> At this point, I don't know if they are trying to stall for something. I don't know if there's something wrong. I don't know what they're planning to do. So I'm getting at the point where we're threatening to call the police. David and I are getting really scared. They're gonna try something. So he has me and the dogs lock ourselves in a room while he makes them get out. And finally he got them out and they left a mess everywhere. They left wet towels and stuff everywhere. It was really gross. The house wasn't taken care of. The dogs seemed scared. It was one of the worst things I've ever experienced in my life and something I absolutely regret because my dogs mean literally everything to me and I will never, ever, ever, ever do that ever again. So this time around, I have a very good friend watching them. I am not worried about them whatsoever for this trip. This friend has a dog who is one of my other dogs, like best friends. She lives super close to me and she's just gonna stay at my house while we're gone, which is super nice of her. She's one of the type of people where I could tell her something ridiculous, like, hey, the dogs need to go out every 25 minutes, which obviously that's not true. I'm not asking her to do that, it's just an example. And she would do it. She's that type of person, she's great. So I'm not worried about the dogs at all. I feel a lot better about going out of town this time. But yeah, it was one of the worst things ever. But I am grateful that I came back and my dogs were all intact and my house was intact and nothing worse happened, but lesson learned. Going to do my final top coat for this. I'm going to put these on my nails with glue, but when I take them off the form, I probably will shape them to my nail a little bit and re-top coat. But nonetheless, here is our first design, love. That was a more simple design. The other nails that aren't as short are gonna have a little bit more complicated designs. I had actually done a test nail where I did some parts in gold, like some of you suggested, but because it's like gold shimmer glitter, it doesn't look quite right. And I'm not sure if I wanna mess with doing like gold powder on top. If I have some extra time, maybe we can try that at the end, but right now we're gonna stick with this. Make sure we're wiping it off. Next up, I'm gonna try to just do the outline first and then I can do the connective stuff afterwards. Wow, it's terrible. Yeah, I'll just restart. I don't know about you guys, I know it is only July, but seeing all of the Halloween stuff come out is making me so happy. I've been feeling really burnt out lately, not necessarily with YouTube and videos and stuff like that, but just with like being alive and doing things every single day. I think that my depression gets a lot worse in the summer and warm months, which is usually the opposite of what people get for seasonal depression. Usually it's, you know, the lack of sun and stuff like that. But for me, I think having it be hot and muggy outside just like makes everything worse. I don't know. I think I do this every single year where I have a crisis around this time and then Halloween and fall comes around and I'm like, oh wow, everything's, a little bit better. So I'm hoping that that's the case this year. Everything else going on in the world also definitely is not helping. I feel like I'm having a hard time grasping that stuff going on politically is real. It feels really dystopian to me. And if I start reading about it too much, I feel like I start to really dissociate really badly with it. It's just baffling to me and it feels very helpless. You know, and like I try to donate and sign stuff, but like it sucks that's like not one person can really do anything. There's not really a real solution to it that any one person can do. And that's also very depressing, very sad. For this nail, I don't know if I want to try to do all the different little connections. I think I might not do that with this one and see how that looks. I don't know if it will or will not look like a stained glass window with it, but let's try it. I can always add lines afterwards. I'm not even sure if I went to my original point earlier because I kind of got off track, but my point about the season was that I've been seeing Halloween stuff and that's been making me so happy. I went to Home Goods the other day and I had sort of seen some people on TikTok saying that Halloween stuff was in, but I did not expect to go in and have it be full blown Halloween. I was shocked, taken back. I grabbed a card immediately, of course. I got a bunch of pillows 
and just a couple other cute little, you know, like decor things. And I'm so excited to put them out. And I cannot wait to show you guys what I'm going to do with my Jeep for Halloween. I could not be more excited. I'm going to go all out again this year. Last year, I did go all out, I feel like. However, I was also dealing with a lot, a lot, a lot last year around that time. So this year, I'm going to go all out and hopefully enjoy it a whole lot more. And I'm also planning stuff a bit further in advance. Usually it's like a week before October and I'm like, oh God, got to get ready. But I'm starting to plan now. So I think we're off to a good start. For the background, I'm going to do a nice bright blue. I'm not sure what to do about the clouds. I think I might have a milky color somewhere. Oh, it's not quite the same as jelly, but it might have to work. Jelly white exists. I think that's milky. Okay, yeah, I do. I have this one. It's a top coat technically, but I think it should work. Let's see. Maybe. I think that might work, but I'm going to try to do a thin, thin layer of it because I still want it to be see-through. I feel like that's good. I did do a little bit of a lighter background today so that the jelly would be a little bit easier to see, but I will absolutely show you guys in the sun and on a white, white background afterwards. There's just something about a pure white background that my eyes just cannot stand to look at, especially when I'm editing. It makes me feel crazy and just having color here, something else makes it feel so much more entertaining. I don't know. I just couldn't look at just a plain white for me anyway. Just no. Does this look like a stained glass window? I guess maybe not. I don't know. You know what? I think I'm going to leave it though. I don't know if it necessarily looks like a stained glass window, but it definitely still looks like stained glass to me. I think not having all of the, you know, extra little connecting pieces makes it not look like as much of a stained glass, but I don't know if I want to add all of that to this one. I think it's kind of pretty as is. So I'm just going to top coat it and redraw the black on it. And I can always go back and add more lines, but I can't really, you know, take them off after I've cured them very easily. I'm going to put a top coat on now and then we can test and see if I should add those extra lines and this will kind of determine if I do some nails like this where there's not a bunch of connecting lines or if I do some where it's essentially a drawing with thick thick outlines and you know jelly paint and then they will be a little bit more transparent than they are now because at the end I will top coat underneath which makes it just even clearer but just I'm not there yet let's see i guess i would probably do maybe some more curved lines mm, i think it's a no from me i'm trying to do my chit chatting through what i think are going to be the best designs because i know that at some point today there's going to be a time where i just got to buckle down and do them as quick as possible nope that's definitely not a circle it's not the worst circle i've ever done I'm trying to mentally plan out like my next couple days before the trip. Tonight I'm going to go get my lashes done. I like eyelash extensions, but I just don't like wearing them 24 seven, but I do really like getting them for trips. Don't get me wrong, trips are fun, but I definitely just stress about everything. And so something that comes to mind when I'm thinking about getting ready and stuff like that is eyelashes because <laughs> I have to have my eyelashes on. But what if one starts falling off while we're out? What if I don't have glue? So I just get eyelash extensions and I feel like I feel better the whole time and I don't have to worry about glue. I don't have to worry about anything peeling off. I don't have to worry about not having enough time. You know, it just makes everything so much simpler. So I'm gonna go get this tonight, but I have to dye my hair before I do that because you're not supposed to get eyelashes wet for 24 hours after you get them done. And the 24 hours would put me right at like the night before we're about to go. And I don't wanna be dyeing my hair the night before. I gotta do this, dye my hair, get lashes done finish nails, edit this video, get it up, pack, get my guest or bedroom ready, the whole everything. <laughs> this is going to be a flower. Does it look all right? It's a little wonky. It's a little wonky. I recently got these like little micro q-tips and they've been so helpful. I will link them. They are the best for cleaning stuff up like this and making sure that like underneath your cuticles are really clean and stuff like that. They're really great. <laughs> This is where having so many different colors is going to come in handy because I want to do behind the flower rainbow, but I also want to do all of the petals different colors. I don't want it all to be like the same shade. Now to fill in these little stripes. Will this one look like a stained glass window too? I don't know. 
but I feel like I'm loving how these designs are looking. With this type of design, it's actually really nice to fill in. It's really fun. It's kind of like a coloring book. Once you have the black outline done with these designs, it's actually really easy to fill in. The black kind of acts as a barrier, so there's not a lot of spillage into other gels, even if the gels are a little bit thinner. And I'm globbing them on, honestly because I want them to be pretty strong in color and I feel like it does pretty well, especially when you go over with that upper layer of black. Everything just like looks really clean, I guess. And now we do it all over again. <laughs> So cute, I love it. Okay, on to the next one. I think this is probably gonna be my favorite one. I feel like it'll be a lot of your favorites too. So like I said, this video is gonna be a little all over the place. I have to go get my lashes done now and I will be back. So the lashes uh, did not go as planned. You may or may not have seen, there's not a necessarily new style of lashes, but it's what people are calling like anime style lashes now where the lashes have like really long spikes and they're like super, super, super wispy, but also kind of light looking. You know what I mean? I wanted those. Surprisingly, I actually did not want like super long, tons of volume today. I just wanted some fluffy, you know, like longer spike type ones. And honestly, I probably should have known I wasn't gonna get kind of what I wanted after I talked to her and she told me that that wasn't hybrid lashes, that those were wispy volume. And I said, that's fine. You know, charge what you will for this set, but this is what I want. And she said, do you want the picture or do you you want the hybrid set like you booked and I said sorry I don't I don't know exactly what you would call that but you know you can call it whatever you want but this is what I want the picture and she didn't really even look at the picture very much so I ended up pretty much leaving with wispy volume which that's definitely not what I wanted and I'm gonna pause really quick I know this is very much a first world problem okay but I'm just gonna tell you guys about it okay it's just like chit chat here you know like we're friends I probably should have said something at the end but I feel like lashes are hard because it's not like with your hair where you're looking in a mirror the whole time and you can see if something's going wrong at the end the lashes are like done it was seven something she didn't even ask me if I liked them <laughs> she kind of got me out the door pretty quick so I was really upset and I came home and I took them all off so uh, that sucks for me. If she had asked if I liked them or something, I probably would have said something, but she just like had me get up, told me to look at them, but immediately was like, okay, it's this much and waited for my card. And then I gave her my card and she was like, okay, bye. And I was like, oh, okay, bye. And then I left. So I don't know. I was really upset about it yesterday, but I'm gonna try not to let it bother me today. Just gonna deal with it. I got a little test version of the Lashify stuff where you put on like strips yourself and it's supposed to last for like seven days and I liked it. So I think I'm gonna try to do that on myself today for what's left of my lashes. I didn't just rip those ones out. I used remover to my best ability. I didn't have like, you know, a proper remover, but I was able to get the majority out without actually ripping my actual eyelashes out. But some of them were kind of like stuck to my skin. So I had to kind of like, you know, pull those ones out. There is no not finishing these nails today because my flight is in less than 24 hours. So we gonna do this. Okay, I think that's good. I'll clean up all the lines and stuff when I fill in. I'm also having a really hard time finding what I wanna wear. Cause I feel like I don't get the opportunity to like really go all out very often. So I have like all of my shoes and accessories and stuff like that that I wanna wear in one dress, but I need another dress that I wanted to wear for my birthday. And I had a pink one that I had ordered, just like a pink satin one. And it was supposed to be a light pink, but it came in and it was almost like a mid-tone pink purple, which I really didn't like. So after I got my lashes done, I ran to the mall and the dressing rooms were closed. So I wasn't able to try the dresses on. So I got two dresses and neither of them fit. I'm fine with my body shape, but it's really hard to find clothes that fit. From here on, you guys know what I'm doing. So we're just going to pop to when I have done the extra outline because I don't think anyone needs to watch me retrace lines. <laughs> I've got six more designs to do, so we gotta move. This one, I'm gonna try to do a mushroom. I think it could look really pretty. Go with the cottage core vibe, you know? At my angle, it looks better, but from your angle, it looks really bad. Mm. Low key, this kind of looks more like a jellyfish. Hopefully when it's all colored in, it'll look a lot better. I initially didn't grab out the McCart orange because it's really bright. <laughs> like, 
this is it right here. It's really bright coming out of the bottle, but in a thin layer like this, it's pretty muted. And I didn't think I would use it, but I think it's actually the perfect color for the stem here. I didn't really want to mix colors, especially with the jelly. You know, it just seems like, I don't know, could go wrong easily, but I got it out to do the stem here. I'm realizing now that I should have done like a different view, like a under view of the mushroom, but it's too late now. It's probably my worst nail so far. These next two are gonna be a little bit more simple. I didn't wanna do too much on the pinkies because there's really not that much room. So for this one, I'm just gonna do sort of like a pixelated sunset. And then like I said, I am already in the Halloween spirit. So I figured I would sneak in some Halloween to the set. So for this one, this one's going to be a spider web, but I'm gonna make it a little bit colorful to match the rest of the set. I feel like it's more of a recent thing that future holiday stuff is getting put out so early because this is the first time I think ever I've received Halloween stuff for my birthday, which I loved but I couldn't tell you a time that I was like at the store around my birthday that I thought, mm, I want this Halloween item. So I'm not sure if that's just this year type of thing or if that's gonna continue. But I also saw Christmas stuff the other day also, which yeah, Halloween's in a couple months, but we have like half a year until Christmas. So I don't know. I don't know what's happening with all that. I'm not necessarily complaining though. So here is my Halloween in July nail. I still have a few more to do, so I'm going to check back in with you guys when I am on my last nail. This last nail is space themed. I thought that would be fun. This set has taken me so long, but I think it's gonna be worth it. Here we are. I still have to dye my hair and do my lashes after this. I think, I'm not sure if I'm super set on it, but I think what I'm gonna do with my hair is chunky pink highlights, kind of like when I did the brown with pink or green, you know, but with blonde instead of the brown. I think that would look really cool if I can do it right. The whole trip theme is a lot of pink and stuff. So who am I to not stick with a pink theme? Ooh, I'm getting all shaky now. And here is the finished set. I'm super happy with them. I definitely like some more than others. I would have to say the Koi and the strawberry are definitely my favorite. My least favorite actually probably being the spider web. I wish I didn't do it so dark. Wish I would have done orange instead, but I am super happy with them. Here they are with like pure white behind. Of course, I'll show you guys up to the light as well, but this is the final result. I hope you guys enjoyed these nails. It uh, was definitely a labor of love. This took me, I want to say almost an hour at least her nail somehow. Please make sure to give this video a like if you enjoyed it. I'd really appreciate it and it helps me out so much. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will hopefully see you next time. Bye!